Hey everybody, it is the end of April here in New Hampshire. Temperatures are staying above 40 degrees, even overnight. So it's time to uh, wake Maggie up from her winter's nap. I mean, we nudged her a couple of times when we changed the oil in the generator and the motor, and then again when we did the topper on the main slide, but you know what? It's time to wake her up now, because hopefully she won't have a winter's nap next year. Now, when we dewinterize, it's more than just sanitizing the lines, and your routine should be too. What we like to do is we like to just check everything, make sure nothing happened over the winter. We're gonna start on the roof. Caution, this is not meant to be an instructional video. We are not professionals. We are just RV owners attempting to do maintenance on our own RV. We are not responsible for anyone attempting this maintenance on their own. Get going with us! Now, if you have access to get up onto your roof and you have the wits inside you to get up on your roof, you should. Come up here and check all the seals around the antennas, the vents, refrigerator, anything up here that goes through your roof, you want to check the seals. Now, as you can see, as we're walking along here, we have a turn bond everything because on our Class C, we lost our roof. Cheryl and I had to replace it ourselves. It was a great experience, and it was enough experience to know we never want to do it again, especially on a piece of fiberglass. All right, so after the roof, we're gonna go do a walk around the exterior now. All right, so as you're doing your exterior walk, you're just looking to make sure that everything is how it was when you put it away. None of the windows are broken. Any place where sealant is, you do want to check it and just make sure that it's still well sealed. And if not, you want to reseal it. Especially you want to check those T-rails. Yeah, definitely the T-rails. If <laughs> you've seen our other videos. So you want to check your seals for your, uh, for your slide. If you have a map on your slide, you want to check, make sure you didn't lose any of your states. <laughs> <laughs> but just make sure that everything is working as is. I mean, run your slides out. You're going to want to run your awning out. We've already done all of this stuff. But um, as we're going along right now, I should just... This is where the refrigerator is. This is how we had winterized our uh, ice maker. So what we're going to do now is hook it back up before we get too far. All right, first thing we're going to do, we're going to hook this back up. This is where the water goes into the ice maker. We like to just have this stuff just connected in the winter, so we don't even have to worry about it. And again, we really don't even use the ice maker, so. And then just hook up the water supply itself. And most importantly, turn it on. Now water will flow when we do the sanitization. Now if you take your batteries out of your RV, this would be the time to charge them up, check the fluids, and put them back in. We kept ours in, so Maggie we'll be fine. Was, Maggie was plugged in all winter. Yeah. All right, the other thing that you're going to want to do is you want to check your tires. You want to check to try to cross it. Either look from the front or turn the steering wheel to make it easier to see. It, make sure they're wearing evenly. If they're not, then you probably need a front end alignment, or you at least need to get it checked because it could be a problem. The other thing you want to check is your sidewalls. Make sure there's no cracks in them, all right? As the tires get older, well, they need to be replaced every five to seven years, whether they need to be replaced or not. That's according to RV manufacturers because of the weight that they have to uh, hold up and all the elements, the sun beating on it when they sit most of the time. So every five to seven years. I believe travel trailers are every two or three to five, something like that. You'd have to look that up to know for sure. Um, it's a big investment when you have to do it. I mean, there's six tires on this thing. But knowing that you have tires that are good under you, on the road, moving you along the road is a good thing. Now also behind the tire, you wanna get under there along the front axle and the steering, you wanna make sure you get all the grease circs. That has to do with uh, your sit, uh, all of your steering. So that is also important. All right, you're also gonna to wanna to get underneath the RV. You wanna check for leaks from the engine, the tranny, the rear end, leaks anywhere. You also wanna just see if there's wires hanging, you wanna tape them up, zip, zip tie them, do something with them. We went under, we found that one of the heating pads on one of our holding tanks was just dangling. Had we not looked under, we would have ended up losing that. So what we did is we cleaned where it goes, the mating surface, sprayed it with spray adhesive, put it back up, and then took a little Gorilla Tape, taped both sides, that's going nowhere. Also, while you're under there, look for any signs where rodents may have been trying to get in. All right, that takes care of the outside. I mean, do all four sides. <laughs> We're giving you just a summary. Now let's go inside now. All right, for your interior, run all of your slides out. Watch them go out. Make sure that they are going out like they normally do. You want to check around the slides, the wall area, around the floor. Make sure that there is no signs that there was any leakage. You know, like Maggie. 
<laughs> you want to put all the lights on, make sure all the lights work. We're going to end up testing everything in here while the water is being sanitized. But this is just a pre walkthrough. You want to change the batteries in all of your alarms, and unless they're hardwired. And you want to check for rodents. We do have one area that was prone last year to rodents. Any of these little access panels, you'd want to check. Take it out. This one we did have trouble in last year, so we... <laughs> one, we haven't pulled this yet, so... Graphic image. Nope. Not this year. I guess they learned their lesson from last year. <laughs> Actually, the problem was underneath here where all the plumbing comes up through, Jacob had never sealed it. So when we went to the factory, they did seal it first. So obviously it worked, but we're keeping this in there anyway. So you want to check all the access points, check your draws, any place where a rodent can get. The idea is not to get them in here at all. All right, we're going to turn this on now because it's going to take probably more than 24 hours before it will make ice. So we want to get it to start cooling down immediately. Before we can sanitize the lines in the tank, we have to get rid of all the RV antifreeze. So if you used compressed air and didn't use the RV antifreeze, you can skip this step. So what we're going to do first, we're going to hook in our city water. We're going to hook it in and we'll turn it on and we're going to one by one turn on each faucet and get rid of the antifreeze. Which is in there. Now RV antifreeze is non-toxic. So if some gets on the ground, Brandy is safe. Nothing will happen to her. So we are putting it on two and six for city fixtures. Yep, that will run water just to the lines themselves. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do all the hot water first, one at a time, until all the pink is gone. Oh, and it will it will spill. Just wanna run it until there's no more pink. It's foamy. Yeah, but it's still got a lot of air in it too. Doing a hot in the bathroom. Okay. Shower. RV antifreeze will stain plastic, so. And the outside shower. Again, this is non-toxic. Antifreeze for cars, that will kill you. Yeah. And any animals. So we pretty much have all the antifreeze up. Alright. So now we're going to do all the cold. If we were to use compressed air to winterize Maggie, we would still pour a bottle of antifreeze down the drains and in the toilet. Why? Well, because on the toilet, that's exactly how much we put in there at the beginning of winter. So now I know for a fact that the seal for the ball works. If that was gone, that would mean the seal was gone. That would mean that the toilet would not hold any water for you for the season, so. And that appears to be clear. Not that we wanted to show you what it looks like down on the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't zoom in. Put some water in. Is it pink in there or is that clear? It's clear. Okay. Still a little bit of air, but that's all right. All right, the very, 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 very last thing that we have to do before sanitizing, unless you have one of these, you can skip this step too, is we need to run a wash with nothing in it. That will get all of the uh, pink stuff out of there and it will let us know that it's still working fine. We're just gonna run a load on hot and on two, just the reverse of what we did to winterize it. So I'm gonna turn it on and hit start. So you can see the antifreeze filling up. So it's draining all the lines to the washing machine. Now we'll let it run through a cycle. Washing machine's all done. So we can turn it off. Oh, and we also went around and checked underneath all the faucets just to make sure that there were no leaks. And we are doing fine. Yay! So what we're going to do now is going to shut off the city water and open up the low drain points and get all of the water out of Maggie. All right, we disconnected the city water. Next step, open all your low drain points.
we went in and had lunch. The low drain points have uh, finished draining. So we're gonna close them. And then we're going to prepare a bleach solution to sanitize. Now keep in mind, if you have a conventional hot water heater, make sure the bypass is still on. You do not want to sanitize that hot water heater tank. If you have an on-demand like we do, you don't gotta worry about it, there is no bypass. Yay. So what we need to do is we need to make a solution of bleaching water. Now what's recommended is a quarter cup to every gallon of water will equal 15 gallons of sanitized water in your tank. Make it simple. We have 71.5 gallon tank, fresh water. So you divide that by 15, you'll come up with like 4.7 something. <laughs> really not making it any simple. Five gallons is what we're gonna do. <laughs> we're just rounding up. Okay, cup and quarter of bleach going in. Then I'm just going to fill it. All right, so you wanna get your bucket up off the ground to do this because, well, it's a shot hose and it's going there. You wanna pretty much be able to get it all the way in there. Now, make sure you don't have a filter in here. <laughs> that's one thing that I haven't mentioned to you because, well, you don't wanna be using that if, if you do. So that's completely empty right now. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna pop this off. Now, if you were here for our, our winterization, we have nothing but problems trying to siphon anything into the tank via the water pump. So what we do is this screen that's in here. Can you see that? Let me come see. Yep. What we're gonna do is we're gonna pull that out. And behind that, that's a one-way valve. So what we'll do is we'll put this in backwards. And what that's gonna do is that is going to hold that valve open. And it will suck this in so much faster. When you're done, you have to turn it back around or you're gonna have nothing but trouble Don't <laughs> when you try to hook up the camp. You want to do, sanitize the tank. So we're gonna put it on one and we have to put it on four. Now what we're gonna do is going to turn on the water pump and hopefully it's gonna suck it in. <laughs> Going for its prime. And. All right, so we took the shot hose off. You want to switch this back around. You want the cone pointing out. And just push it back in there. The hose will seat it the rest of the way. Then just take your water from your house or wherever you happen to be doing this. Mount it. The screen is in the proper way, the hose is hooked up. Now we are going to go city fill the tank, so we need one and six. I'm gonna turn the water on, I'm gonna let the tank fill up. And once that's done, we're gonna go open all the faucets again. Try to smell some bleach. All right, we are up to two lights already. So what we're gonna do while we're waiting for it to finish filling is we are going to try the propane on the stove, refrigerator, furnace. Just make sure it's working correctly. Now what you need to do, you turn it to light. Oh, didn't even need to bleed. That's not bad. All right, so let's check them all, shall we? Put it on high. On high. Light. I can cook. Yay! <laughs> all right, we've been running the refrigerator. But we're going to check to see whether or not it will run on gas. We couldn't really hear it inside, so... There it is. It's running on propane now. Next thing to check would be the furnace. Let's put it up to 81. See what happens. It's on. Check a vent. It just ignited. And it's starting to get warm. And there you go. Now we are checking the ACs. That's one of them. Oh yeah, that's blowing good. It seems like each year little pieces of styrofoam yeah. come out of there. Yeah, they're falling in the, uh, in the vents up there. So. Well, that 
Yeah. All right, now, make sure, if you haven't done it, especially in a while, that you clean your vents. Your AC could be different from ours. All right. These just push in, pull down, and then these slide right out. Just wash them. You know, just run them under water. Get them all clean. Get all the lint off. They clean really easy. Yes. Um, At least ours do. <laughs> it will work much more efficiently if you clean them. It's just a simple matter of sliding it back in, putting this in where it goes. I'm done. And action. I can feel it. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Is it hot? It's hot. All right, microwave works. We now have four lights, so Chuck is going to shut the water off. All right, now we need to set it to normal, which is three and five. So three is there, five is there. And we're going to go in, turn on a water pump, and run water through the lines until we smell bleach. Remember, make sure your bypass is on if you have a conventional hot water heater. Let's go. All right, we're gonna turn the water pump on now, let it catch its prime, and then uh, smell for bleach. All right, so we're going to turn on the hot water now here at the sink and run it through until we smell bleach. Yep, all over the top of the tank, the sides, and it gives us an opportunity to take Maggie out for a ride and just make sure everything seems to be running fine. Want to see where Brandy sits? Right by the doghouse. Right between us. <laughs> so Maggie did great on the road. We're back from our ride. Levelers are back down. We now have four hours to wait until the we, cycle is completely yeah, done. When we drain it, <laughs> and then put in some uh, fresh water, and then that will about do it. Yes. So we'll see you guys in about four hours. We're gonna go do some painting on the house now. Yes. <laughs> all right, so it's been a little over four hours. We're going to open all the low drain points again. All right, so it's starting to get a little bit cool out, so I had to put a sweater on. We have drained all of the bleach solution, so now I'm gonna close the low drain points. It's getting dark. And I finish this in the dark. All right, they're all closed. Now I'm going to set this to city fail again. So that would be one and six. Now, I'm just going to go and turn the water on. And then we're going to have that fill. Then we're going to go in and turn on all the faucets till we can't smell bleach. And that's going to do it. Oh, we got to check the hot water heater too. The fresh water tank is full of fresh water. So final step, we're going to go through the procedure again and we're going to leave the water running until we cannot smell the bleach anymore. So hot water first. Get the air out of it. All right, so now you're going to want to turn on your conventional hot water heater to make sure that it's going to work. Now we have the on demand, so it's a lot easier on ours. Just, okay, we're done. <laughs> Now we're gonna go in and see whether or not it works. Let's turn on the hot water heater. It's at 213. Let's see if it lights. It's it works. It's heating it. All right. Good to go. Good to go. I wanna go camping. <laughs> Okay, it's the next day. Let's see if we have any ice. Yeah. Sounds like it. <laughs> and yes, we do. Yay. Hey, it looks good. Yeah? Okay. No pink. <laughs> Very good then. Right, let's close out the video. All right, guys, that's how Cheryl and I wake up Maggie. <laughs> now, we only gave you a summary of what we consider dewinterizing as far as walking around checking things and you know taking care of any little problems and that the important topics yeah <laughs> the important topics but the main focus of this video we want it to be 
of sanitizing the tank and the lines, which I think we pretty much did. Mm -hmm. Now the water that we just put in here and then just ran to make sure there was no bleach in it, we will end up dumping that also and we will put fresh water in. And before we do that, we will put the filter back into the filter housing. Yes. So um, other than that, I think we pretty much touched on everything that we wanted to touch on here. Mm -hmm. It's a, it seems like a wicked long process, but, well, it is. <laughs> but it's the four-hour wait that you have to go through. We did things in between, like yeah. weeding the flower beds yeah. and painting. <laughs> yeah, because we're still trying to get the house ready to put on the market. We, we're we going for... You sure wants to put it on July 1st. I'm saying any time... June 1st. June 1st. I'm saying any time next month. <laughs> so... As soon uh, as it's ready. <laughs> we do have a realtor. So we, we have talked to her. She wants to be putting... Uh, Coming soon out there, but we want to get the house the way we want it Not first. Not until the flower beds are done. Yeah, yeah. She keeps telling us, Dad, I don't do anything. The house is beautiful. Well, then I want it more than beautiful. <laughs> uh, but anyway, other than that, we're getting off topic here. Uh, if you guys like this video and you learned something, we'd appreciate that thumbs up as always. And if you want to become part of the Grown Get Gone With Us gang, right down there in the corner as always. Little red box, click it, and you are in. Feel free to comment and leave any questions. Down below. Down below. Feel free to share this video with anybody that you think might enjoy it. Yeah, there's a little thing to share it. <laughs> yeah, it's a share under him. Little it? arrow thing. <laughs> but uh, until we do another video, I'm Chuck. And I'm Cheryl. We'll get going with us. Bye.